friends welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Erin and if this is your first time here welcome to booked and busy today's video is going to be my january book haul i'm trying to get back into monthly hauls so that i can keep track of what i'm acquiring and like sharing them with you in a timely manner so they don't just pile up in stacks around my house so uh let's just dive right into it this is not really organized but it's kind of organized so the first ones are going to be ones that were sent to me by the publisher or the company so the first one we have is where the drowned girls go by shauna mcguire this is one of our most anticipated releases for 2022 um tour sent me the art and then they sent me a finished copy i read this in my buzzword readathon vlog so you want more detailed thoughts you can check that out but it's nice haul doing a haul and i've already read some of the books that's, that's pleasant um, the next two were sent to me by Orbit. I've read neither. The first is The Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford, Forged in Fire, Bound in Blood. This is the first book in the Age of the Uprising. Um, I'm excited about this. Um, I'm, I'm planning to do like an interview with the author later this month, so I'm looking forward to that. But it says, The nation of Torin is run on the power of industry, and industry is run by the guilds. Chief among them are the Harkspores, whose responsibility it is to keep the gears of the Empire turning. That's exactly why Rachel matriarch rosamond hawksburg sends each of her heirs to the far reaches of the nation connell the eldest son is dispatched to the distant frontier to earn his stripes in the military toretta is a sorceress with the ability to channel the powers of pyrestone the magical resource that fuels the empire's machines the youngest fullerin is a talented artificer and finds himself acting as a guide to a mysterious foreign emissary as the Hawksworths grapple with the many threats to face the nation within and without, they must finally prove themselves worthy or their empire will fall apart. So this is seeming a more of a modern fantasy, maybe Flintlock, I don't know. But um, with guilds and, and merchants and, and, you know, this type of magic, I'm really intrigued because a lot of the fantasy I end up reading is like swords and sorcery. So I'm intrigued to see where that goes. Another Orbit release is Age of Ash by Daniel Abraham. This one comes out February 15th. Uh, Angels of Empire, I think, came out january 11th i could be wrong january 11th or 18th this is daniel abraham's new trilogy this is the kithamar trilogy um daniel abraham is one of the co-authors of the expanse and in this one we follow um this world this in this series is going to take place over the course of a year and each of the books in the series are going to be from a different character's pov so we're going to be getting different beginnings and endings and different pieces of information that recur occur around the same set of events so we follow this main character alice who lives in like the slums um in the city it's like a city of ancient trade and wealth but she lives in a slum she's a thumb why can't i talk today she lives in the slums of thornhill and she is a thief okay and uh her brother is killed and she's trying to figure out why and things like that that's kind of the setup for this one uh this cover is stunning and it has this like texture that i really like um and so I'm always happy to add more Orbit hardcovers in my collection because I don't have as many of those as other ones. The next two were Fairy Loot books. In these, I hauled in, um, was it? It may have been the vlog, my buzzword vlog. Uh, and that is The Year of the Reaper, which is the December book. It's a YA fantasy, maybe a standalone about this young man who um survives a prison cell and a rotting court and at 18 he wants to return home and then he is targeting a killer because assassins were sent after him or something like that i'm excited about this and then the cold is touched by isabel sterling which is like a vampire kind of contemporary contemporary with like vampires so those are the fairy loot books for december so those are the books that have been sent to me now let's get into the books that i received as gifts some of these all of these actually are like late christmas gifts that just came in january so the first one i want to talk about is from becca and that is assassin's apprentice by robin hobb the first book in the farseer trilogy i'm so happy to have this i know becca looked at my wishes and was like girl i know you own this and i know you've read it but uh i own the the like illustrated edition but all the other editions of my robin hobb books are like in this uk paperback so i wanted a series to match because i want to reread them and i don't know why i want to reread it like this but back then elder lingalong is what brought assassin's apprentice into my life and so it's just like so fitting and just so precious that she gifted this to me so this is the first book in the overarching realm of the elderlings and the first book in the farseer trilogy where we follow a young boy named fitz who is the bastard son of the crown prince in waiting who is dropped off at the doorstep and he is uh raised by the man who handles his father's horses hounds and hogs and at one point in his childhood he's a, he is taking up the task of being an assassin and this is just a heartbreaking novel it is very much a deep character study it's not very plot driven there is a plot but this the main bulk of this story is about fitz's character journey so i'm so excited and thank you so much to becca 
The next two are from G, one of which I've already read. Well, I have already read that one. So um, she sent me The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. I read this in my 24 hour reading vlogs. So I'll link that if you want to see it. And I love this book so much. My first five star of the year made me cry. Like on the live stream with Kayla, I was like crying my eyes out. And this is about, this is this, this book where it's told from the POV of a cat. The stray cat who was rescued by this man and their bond with one another and then something happens and the man's trying to find a home for his cat so he goes to different friends and acquaintances to try to find a new place for his cat to be because he can no longer take care of him and you find out why throughout this story, and it's just heartbreaking and beautiful and moving and just such a sweet cozy tendery i absolutely adore this and G also sent me Rat Queens Volume 6 of The Infernal Path. Rat Queens is like an epic fantasy uh, comic series about these boozy battle maidens who are like mercenaries for hire and they go on these quests. It's really fun and I'm excited to be continuing on with the series. And then we have another gift from Altamna Dusk. Two of the books she sent me came in December and this one uh, came in January and that is A Conspiracy of Truths by Alexandra Rowland. This is a book where the cover really intrigued me but then the story it says tell a good story that will catch and hold their attention or die and that setup reminds me of, of the wrath and the dawn by renee audier in a bleak far northern land a wandering storyteller is arrested on charges of witchcraft though chant protests his innocence he is condemned not only as a witch but as a spy his only chance to save himself rests with the skills he has honed for decades tell a good story catch and hold their attention or die but the attention he catches is that of five elected rulers of the country and chant finds himself caught in a tangled corrupt political game which began long before he he ever arrived here as he snatched from one crane's grass to the other he realized that he could either be a pawn for one of them or a player in his own right after all he knows better than anyone how powerful the right story can be powerful enough to save a life certainly powerful perhaps even powerful enough to bring a nation to its knees okay okay we're in there together so the next set i recently discovered um, a new independent bookstore in my area and that is solid state books um check them out if you're interested they were founded in 2017 and i picked up three books from them so the first one is split tooth by tiny tigak this is a fierce tender heartbreaking story unlike anything you've ever read um and this is by an indigenous author who's a throat singer i know that in the audiobook is throat singing and i think it's like horror like some horror elements um about this woman who becomes pregnant and then things kind of go awry from there and then we have the memory police by yoko Oga yoko ogawa i think i'm trying to combine this with yoko ogawa and this is like a speculative fiction novel about this island this unnamed island where words start to disappear and this woman she's a writer and her editor is like wanted by the police and so she tries to hide him away and her writing is the only thing that's holding these things in their mind um so really excited about those and then i also picked up a signed first edition of to paradise by hanya Yanagihara, her newest release and this takes place over the course of three timelines and three centuries and different iterations of these characters i honestly have no idea what it's about but i thought it was stunning i love the spine in the back and i want to read um honey gone the hardest back list i was like well why not pick up her latest release too the next three titles we're going to talk about are some non-fictions one of which i have read and the other two are new to me the first is you are a badass how to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life by jen sincero this is one of my favorite books of all time this is a book that changed my life and i think my life is changing again so i wanted to revisit it i've owned this before i've loaned it out before and i just needed another copy because i want to reread this one and then I also picked up a book. These both have been on my TBR for a long time. I've been really, really interested in them. And I finally just got physical copies. The first is Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, I've heard amazing things about Sapiens. And I know that the, this uh, professor has other books out um, that explore like the human experience and history and all that. And I'm really in intrigued in the writing style. Really uh, worked for me. And I love that they're like graphs and charts and, and like photographs and all these things in here i probably would pick this up on audiobook and listen along as i read because i feel like i could just learn a lot like this is the type of nonfiction i like i like history based stuff or learning specific things uh, so i'm excited to read about like the history of mankind i guess and then in that same vein i picked up the splendid and the vile by eric larson uh the devil in the white city was my first book by this author one of my favorite books that i read in 2020 and it was a nonfiction about the um Chicago's World's Fair and H.H. Holmes, neither of which I had an interest in prior to reading those books. But with this one, this is about Churchill, which I already have an interest in prior to reading this. I think I'll enjoy this even more. This is this author's most recent um, 
nonfiction release and his fiction his nonfiction reads like fiction which is what I really enjoy so I'm learning all these things I'm engaged with the storytelling and I just really like it and this one is about uh, it starts with Winston Churchill's first day as prime minister and it's the how Churchill taught the British people the art of being feelers art of being feelers political brain brinkmanship and his actual like private life uh, if you don't know this about me um I went to school I was a political science history major so and also like war history is like uh, one of my favorite like subjects of history I studied a lot of wars and and the political situation surrounding wars so that really intrigues me so this is like right up my alley next up we have a couple January releases I'm sure there are um, other January releases in this stack but these are just the three that I have right here so we have daughter of the moon goddess by Su Lin Tan which is a first book in a duology and is a retelling of the uh legend of Chang Yi, the chinese moon goddess and it's about this woman who is her daughter and how she escapes and like the life that she leads and then we have um the appeal by janice hallett which is a murder mystery uh one murder 15 suspects can you uncover the truth and what really got this for me I didn't even realize because the UK cover is so different that I haven't seen Megan from Mega Books talk about this for months and months and months and she recently read it and didn't love it. But A Dazzling Clever mod Modern Agatha Christie and I recently read um, and then there were none. It like changed my mystery life. And this is told in mixed media so that like emails, text messages, but mainly emails. So I'm excited to see if this works for me because I, I don't really need, read many books with like mixed media elements. Um, and then we also have The Starless Crown by James Rollin. It's about an alliance and a group of people who come together on this quest to save their world. Um, this author is typically a thriller author, so I feel like the pacing of this is probably going to be really interesting and really like fast paced. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Um, I have a vlog that I'm doing where I'm going to be reading some of these new releases. So be on the lookout for that. I don't know if that'll have come out before this video. If it has, I'll link it. If not, it'll be coming soon. Since we're already talking about new releases, let's go into the next couple new releases that I have. One is The Amber Crown by JC Bedford. This is another one of my most anticipated releases for 2022. And it's about this group of people. We have the king is dead, the queen is missing. On the Amber Coast, the usurper king is driving this nation to the brink of war. And we follow one character who is the captain of the guard who failed to protect the king. We have Merzer, who is a healer witch and she is given the task by the king before prior to his death that uh, takes her on his journey. And then we follow the assassin who started the whole thing. And these three had to discover what really went down and why they all, you know, what they all had in common. Another new release that transitions us into like manga comic category was Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. This is a contemporary graphic novel series where boy meets boy, boy think boys fall in love. It's very cute. This however was my least favorite volume thus far. This one it was extremely different in tone than the other ones and it really read like a PSA from PBS Kids on like what to do if you think your friend has an eating disorder. But I didn't love it. I will be continuing on with the series because it's only one more I believe but this one was a bit of a letdown for me. Uh, going into more comic type stuff and like visual things, I picked up a, uh, a light novel. So this is my status as an assassin. Obviously, it sees the hero. And this is a light novel. So light novels, from my understanding, are like mangas that have been expanded to be more novel-esque. And they still have like pictures and stuff like that, but they're not quite regular novels. I, I don't know much about mangas to tell you really so you might want to go to somebody else to get a more detailed synopsis or like understanding what light novels is or are well i got this one so i want to read more manga and i'm like okay this might work and this is a guy who uh his entire class is stepped away into a fantasy world and in this fantasy world he is a silent assassin and he starts getting really high kill marks and things like that and he is involved in this like dangerous game with royal secrets and then um, Rat Queen, so G sent me volume six, so I went ahead and picked up volume five. I already kind of told you what that one was about. And then I also picked up Punderworld volume one. This is a Hades and Persephone like uh, comic series. This is really precious. It reminds me of Lord Olympus. So I think if you like that, like sweet quirky take on Hades and Persephone that you might like Punderworld. This is kind of like what the art style is like written and illustrated by the same person. And I want to say it's a uh, author slash illustrator own comic maybe uh, but this is like a fantasy romance so it's very precious um got that one so this last set they are gonna not gonna be any particular order i'm just gonna grab them and talk about them so we can wrap this video up so i picked up the love songs of w.e du bois by uh honoree fanon jeffries jeffers 
this is an Oprah book club book I saw a lot of people on Instagram loving this book and like the cover and all that is engaging um, and it really sold me over because the audiobook is narrated by Prentice Oniemi who is a narrator that I adore and um, this author is typically has published like works of poetry before so I'm like okay the writing might be really pretty so I'm a big history buff so I'm like okay let me try and you know branch out broaden my horizons a little bit with this one this is a chunker like 800 pages but so many people loved it everyone who has read it that i've seen has had nothing but amazing things to say about it so i you know want to get with it i figured it would make more sense if i organized these a little bit more so i've done that so the first one we have is another classic and that is the odyssey by homer this edition was like seven dollars at the amazon bookstore and i plan to read this soon and I, the book that i have is like a bind up of homer the odyssey and the iliad I was like i just I really like this edition so i was like okay i'm gonna get that plus it was seven dollars next set of books are all mysteries so we have uh verity and colleen hoover this is like a romantic suspense type of book about this woman who is hired to ghostwrite the last of this woman this famous author's books and she kind of gets embroiled in like their family situation um and like what's going on there and then I picked up the uh, A Treacherous Curse, which is the third book in the Veronica Speedwell series. It's a historical um, mystery series about this woman named Veronica Speedwell who teams up with this man named Soaker and they are both natural historians and they go on and solve mysteries. It's like really fun and really engaging and the banter between the two of them is like absolutely hilarious. So I really love that. Um, I picked up The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. This is the first book in the Erky Poro mystery series. Um, and it is uh, the first book like where we're gonna introduce Erky Poro. Uh, I've been reading, I started reading Agatha Christie. I told y'all that earlier and I wanted to read more but I wanted to start at the beginning and like read them in order. So this is the first in the Poro series. So uh, I know there's like another movie coming out later on this year and I wanna watch that. So like, let me go ahead and get through those first few books so that I can like be caught up for the movie. Another historical mystery that I picked up because I loved Veronica Spiegel so much, I want to read like more books like that. And that is A Study in Scarlet Women by Sherry Thomas. This is the first book in the Lady Sherlock series. And it is about Sh Charlotte Holmes. Um, and she goes on to become like a mystery. So just give me like a Nola Holmes vibes. So I'm excited to like get into that one. The next one is The Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. I am a co-host for the Book Troop Book Club for the month of February, which is Gabby from Gabby Reese's Book Club. And so we're going to be reading this. This is a pretty short one. Um, and this one is about this man named Cooper and his daughter. No electricity, no family, no connection to the outside world. So it's like an isolation a survival type of situation uh and no one really knows where they are and people come their boundaries are blurred and then things start happening uh, that kind of thrust them back into like reality i think so i'll be definitely reading this in a vlog and there will be a live show later on in the month or actually in the in, towards the end of february where i'll be discussing this with gabby so be on the lookout for that if that interests you I also picked up Where They Wait by Scott Carson. This was 50% off at Barnes and Noble so I wanted to check it out. Uh, I've heard this described as like a sci-fi thriller um and i really like sci-fi or sci-fi thriller horror um gabby had mixed feelings about it kayla really liked it um and the sci-fi element really intrigues me and this is about uh this man who's laid out from this newspaper and it has to do with like sleep and things that happen in technology that impacts your sleep so i'm intrigued the first book I want to talk about is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. If you were on the stream, you know why I'm reading this. If you weren't on the stream, you will find out soon enough. Uh, <laughs> that's vague and it's okay. You'll get it. I'm sure you've also, that's like a YA favorite classic type of book. People, everybody's read that. I picked up The Inheritance of Orcadia Davinia. Um, I heard really great things about this uh, from Monet and like literally everyone that's read this. And I tried to sample the writing and it was really pretty. So I'm like, okay, if I like this, I'll probably go back and read the rest of that author's backwards because I know she has some YA titles. Um, and it's about this woman who is about to die. And so she invites all her descendants to her home to collect their inheritance. I picked up In an Absent Dream by Shannon McGuire, which is book four in the Wayward Children series. I really love this one. And I read this from the library. And I think this is like maybe my favorite of the ones that I've read. So I wanted to have a physical copy of this. Um, I mentioned the Wayward Children series earlier, so you already are familiar with that. I picked up Blood of the Assassins, Blood of Assassins by R.J. Barker, which is the second book in the Wounded Kingdom trilogy. And this follows this young boy who's training to be an assassin and he's like disabled or he's like a club foot. And the things that he and his master get up to and she's a woman so i find that most mentor relationship is like 
older man mentor but this one has a woman and they very have a very interesting relationship excuse me and then last but not least in the fantasy category we have a marvelous light this one is like queer magical romance and that's kind of all i know about it it says magic romance mayhem and a beautifully decorated and occasionally actively dangerous edwardian england so romances mysteries things set in like victorian era edwardian era like that is really appealing to me these days so i picked that one up um and i know it's the second book recently got a cover announcement it's going to follow his sister and it's going to be savage so i'm really intrigued so if i like this uh, I have more of that world to consume, so I'm excited about that. And then last but not least, we have the romance category. So most of these are sequels. So I picked up A Scoundrel of Her Own by Stacey Reed. This is the third book in the Sinful Wildflower series. The first one was My Darling Duke, which I absolutely love. Gave five stars, one of my favorite romances of the year, last year. And then the second one was Her Wicked Marquez, which I read or Wicked Marquis, which I read earlier this month and I didn't really like and I said I was going to continue on with that series. What I didn't realize is the third book in that series was her most recent release. So then I was like, okay, let me go ahead and read that. And this one follows the third, one of their friends and she exists as like a, a secret songbird and she gets involved with this mysterious man who knows her identity and like all of that. And then we have um, Electric Idol by Katie Roberts. This is the second book and the Dark Olympus series, and this one follows uh, uh, Eros and Psyche, which in or Psyche, I don't know. We follow the end of their story at the at the. We got a little bit of a taste of their story at the end of um, Neon Gods and like the setup for this one. So I'm intrigued. I've been really into my Greek myth retelling romance bag lately, like with Punderworld, with um, A Touch of Darkness, A Game of Fades. Uh, so. I'm leaning into that with Miss Katie Robert. Uh, another sequel, we have Actor Age E. Brown, which I have already read and I really enjoy it. I gave this one four stars. This is the third book in the Brown series and we follow Eve, who is a pamper princess and she can't really stick to anything. Her family's like, listen, you gotta get your shit together. We're gonna disown you a little bit and you got a year to like hold down a job and be a responsible adult. She finds this B&B that's looking for a cook and she goes to interview doesn't get the job but then she accidentally runs over the owner and then she has to get the job to help him out and this was just really fun really cute i actually listened to this one on audio and i really really liked it and then we had two romances that i picked up because they have like disability rep in them specifically this one always only you by chloe lee this is a bergman brothers novel one of the characters in here has rheumatoid arthritis and so like i'm really excited about that to read that in a book um it says it's an emotional ride and it's about this hockey player and like a sports agent. She has a cane, so I think she's gonna be the one with arthritis. Oh, that's exciting, she has a cane. Uh, it says, the moment I met her, I knew Frankie Zeffirino was someone worth waiting for. Dead pain delivery, secret heart of gold, and a rare one dimple smile that makes my knees weak. I've had a problem at work since the day Ren Bergman joined the team, a six foot three hunk of happy with a sunshine smile. So it's like grump sunshine, but she's the grump. So I'm, we're, we're, we're checking boxes with this so this is the second book in this series uh normally i like to read series in order even when they're romance series but this one specifically has ra rep so this i want the one i want to read and if i like it i'll go back and get the other ones i didn't even realize that this was self-published but that's exciting because the next one also is self-published and that is uh real by kennedy ryan this is a hollywood renaissance novel and this one has chronic pain rep the main the main love interest the woman at least the heroine she has chronic pain um and this one is a director who finds this woman on broadway i believe and he wants her to be in his new movie but he's had issues with the pat in the past where he has dated like a co uh, one of his actresses and that's negatively impacted his career so there's like a forbidden element there and they have chronic pain and i recently uh made me to read this to be my guinea pig and she loved it gave it five stars made her cry so like i'm excited to, to read it into that one so uh that's it let me turn you around here is my january book haul hope you enjoyed if you made it to the end of this video mm, what are we gonna leave what's gonna be our emoji guys <laughs> oh my god oh my god i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know I don't know. 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 Um, let's leave a flower emoji for Punderworld because Miss Persephone be making flowers and stuff and things grow. So if you made it to the end of the video, leave a flower emoji and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.